and when they pronounce the no less common word, there, you hear quite definitely and distinctly the ancient letter, delta, but for both these letters, they make use, without any, remorse, of the same pan-paradoxical, th, single quote. Well, I think that's enough about terrestrial philology. We had better continue to examine why it is customary among your contemporary favorites to have theaters everywhere, and what their contemporary actors do in these theaters, and how they manifest themselves there. Their custom of assembling in theaters, often in large groups, arose in my opinion because these theaters and all that goes on in them happen to correspond very well to the abnormally formed common presence of most of your favorites, who have entirely lost the need proper to free brain beings to actualize their own initiative in everything, and who exist solely in accordance with accidental shocks. From outside are the promptings of the consequences crystallized in them of one or another of the properties of the organ buffer. Ever since those theaters of theirs came into existence, your favorites have assembled in them, not for the purpose of watching and studying the representations of their contemporary actors, no. They assemble merely to satisfy one of the consequences of the properties of the organ buffer, very readily crystallized in the common presences of most of them, called, ornal, which they call, showing off. Thanks to this consequence of the properties of the organ buffer, most of the contemporary beings acquire in their presence a very strange need to evoke in others the expression of the being impulse called astonishment in regard to themselves or even to catch a trace of it on the faces of those around them the strangeness of this need of theirs lies in the fact that they get satisfaction from the manifestation of astonishment on the part of others in regard to their external appearance, which they arrange to conform exactly with the demands of what is called fashion, that maleficent custom that has existed ever since the Tikhonician civilization and is now one of those being factors which automatically leave them neither the time nor the possibility to see or sense reality. This custom, so maleficent for them, consists in periodically changing the external form of what is called the covering of their nullity. Here, by the way, I would remark that it has gradually become the rule, in the general process of the ordinary existence of these three brain beings who have taken your fancy, for these changes in the external form of this covering to be determined by the sort of beings of both sexes who have already become worthy to be candidates for Hasnamus individuals. In this respect, contemporary theaters turned out to be admirably suited to your favorites, because it is very convenient and easy for them to show off, as they like to say, their cheap quaffures, or the specially tied knots of their cravats, or the daringly bared what are called Pukatarian, parts of their bodies, and so on and so forth, and at the same time stare at the latest fashions, brought out according to the edicts of those famous candidates for Hasnamus individuals. To get a clear picture of what the contemporary artists, who in these theaters during all this, showing off, you must first be told about an exceedingly strange illness, known there under the name of dramatizing, the predisposition to which arises in the presence of certain of your favorites thanks simply to the carelessness of what are called their midwives. The criminal carelessness 
focus on the part of the midwife in most instances consists of this before doing her job. She calls on the way at the houses of her other clients and drinks rather more wine than is good for her so that while fulfilling her obligations she unconsciously mutters certain words fixed in the process of the ordinary existence of your favorites like the incantations of what are called magicians and the unfortunate new being at the very moment of its appearance as they say in god's world first imbibes the words of this maleficent incantation formulated as follows F you, what a mess you've made. And so, my boy, thanks to this criminal carelessness on the part of the midwife, the unfortunate new being acquires in his presence that predisposition to the strange illness I mentioned. When one of these three brain beings, who at his first breath has acquired this predisposition to dramatize a prank, reaches the age of a responsible being, if he should know how to write even a little and has the wish to do so, he suddenly gets this strange illness, and begins wise acting on paper or, as is said there, composing various dramas. Single quote. The subjects of these works are usually some events or other which are supposed to have occurred in the past or might occur in the future, or simply events of contemporary unreality. In the common presence of the sick being, there also appear in the course of this peculiar malady seven very specific symptoms. The first is that, when this strange illness arises and begins to function in the presence of a being, particular vibrations are spread around him which act on those near him, as they say, exactly like the smell of an old goat. The second is that, as a result of the change in the inner functioning of such a being, the exterior form of his planetary body undergoes the following changes his nose is held aloft, his arms, as is said, akimbo, his speech is punctuated by a special little cough, and so on. The third, that such a being is always terrified of certain perfectly harmless formations, natural or artificial, as for instance, a mouse, a clenched fist, the stage manager's wife, a pimple on his own nose, his own wife's left slipper, and any number of other things. The fourth symptom causes him to lose entirely all capacity for understanding the psyche of beings like himself. The fifth consists in this, that inwardly and in his outer manifestation he criticizes everybody and everything that does not come from himself. As for the sixth, the data necessary for the perception of anything objective are more atrophied in him than in all other terrestrial free brain beings. And the seventh and last symptom is that there arise in him what are called hemorrhoids, which are, by the way, the only thing he carries with modesty. Further, it usually happens that if the sick being has an uncle who is a member of one or another of their parliaments, or has struck up an acquaintance with the widow of a former businessman, or, if for some reason the period of his preparation for becoming a responsible being has been spent in an environment or in conditions where he has automatically acquired the property called slipping in without soap, a producer, or, as he is sometimes called, an angel, takes his play and orders artists or actors to reproduce it exactly as it was wise acred by this being who has fallen ill with the strange illness of dramatize a brain. And these contemporary 
actors first reproduce this work among themselves, without spectators, and do this over and over again until it corresponds exactly to the indications of the sick being and the orders of the director. And finally, when all this proceeds without the participation of the consciousness and feelings of the actors, who are completely transformed into living automatons, then with the help of those who have not yet become complete automatons, for which reason they acquire the name of stage managers, they go through the same procedure, but now in the presence of other ordinary beings assembled in these contemporary theaters of theirs. Thus from all I have just said, you can easily conclude that these theaters, apart from many definitely maleficent consequences, which I shall soon describe in detail, cannot of course contribute anything toward that lofty aim of the Babylonian learned beings when they created for the first time that form of conscious representation of perceptions and of the associative reactions to them of other beings like themselves. All the same, it must be admitted that these theaters and contemporary actors, of course accidentally, did provide for the process of their ordinary being existence one, not so bad, result. To understand what this, not so bad, result consists of, I must first explain another particularity that has become proper to the common presence of beings who arise according to the principle of Ketoplanots. Single quote. According to this principle, the elaboration in the presence of these beings of the energy necessary for what is called their waking state depends on the quality of the associations proceeding in them during their complete passivity or, as your favorites say, during sleep, and vice versa, the energy needed to make this sleep productive is elaborated from the associative process going on in them during the waking state, which in its turn is dependent on the quality or intensity of their activity. And this was the case for those terrestrial free brain beings ever since great nature was compelled, as I have already told you, to replace the Philasnitamian principle which until then had been proper to their presence with the principle of Egoclonauts. Thereupon there was acquired and still remains in the process of their existence the particularity that if, as they say, they sleep well, they will be awake well, and vice versa, if their waking state is bad they will also sleep badly. Single quote. And so, my boy, since in recent times they have been existing very abnormally, the established automatic tempo that previously had more or less helped the appropriate associations to proceed in them has also undergone a change, so that now they sleep badly and when awake are even worse off than before. And the reason why these contemporary theaters with their actors have come to be useful for improving the quality of their sleep is to be found in the following circumstances. After the need to actualize being part of who he had entirely. disappeared from the presence of most of them, and all the associations of unavoidably perceived shocks began to flow during their waking state only from various, already automatized series of former imprints made up of impressions experienced long ago, and endlessly repeated, there disappeared in them even the instinctive need to receive all sorts of new shocks, vital for three brain beings which issue either from their inner, 
separately spiritualized being parts or from corresponding perceptions coming from without for conscious associations, namely, for those being associations upon which depends the intensity of transformation of every kind of being energy in the presence of beings. three centuries the very process of their existence has become such that in the presence of most of them there have almost ceased to arise during their daily existence any of those being confronted with associations which usually proceed in three brain beings as a result of every kind of new perception and from which alone data can crystallize in them for their own individuality Well then, when your favorites, leading their daily lives in this manner, go to these present-day theaters and watch the senseless manipulations of the actors, and receive shocks one after another from reminiscences of previously perceived images, no less senseless and absurd, there really nilly appear in them during this waking state of theirs more or less tolerable being associations, so that when they get home and go to bed they sleep much better than usual. But although these contemporary theaters with all that goes on in them happen to be an excellent means for helping your favorites to sleep better, of course only for today, the objectively evil consequences they entail for beings, particularly for the rising generation, are incalculable. The greatest harm done by these theaters is that they serve as an additional factor for the complete destruction in three brain beings of all possibilities of ever feeling a need proper to them called the need for real perceptions. And they have become such a maleficent factor chiefly because of the following. When they go to their theaters and, sitting quietly, watch the varied yet senseless manipulations and manifestations of contemporary actors, although they are in their usual waking state, all their associations, whether mental, or emotional, proceed in them exactly as they do during their complete passivity or sleep. That is to say, when they receive a large number of accidental shocks, which stimulate other shocks ensuing from perceptions previously fixed and automatized in a series of impressions, and when there is projected onto them the functioning of the organs of digestion and sex, all this hinders the flow of those conscious being associations which, pitiable as they are, have somehow become automatized to produce in them a more or less correct tempo for the transformation of the substances required for their passive existence, during which the substances required for their active existence must be transformed. In other words, during the time they spend in these theaters, they are not entirely in that passive state in which the transformation of substances required for their usual waking state has become more or less automatized and so these contemporary theaters of theirs have become merely an additional maleficent factor for the destruction of the need for real perceptions. Among many other aspects of the maleficence of their contemporary art, the radiations of the contemporary representatives of art themselves are one of the most obviously ignored but most harmful for all the three brain beings there, as regards the possibility of acquiring conscious, individual beings. Although these maleficent radiations have gradually become or the specific attribute, of the representatives of all branches of their art. My detailed, physical-chemical investigations definitely showed me that they are always most pernicious in those contemporary artists or actors who perform in these theaters of theirs. The noxious
conscious effect on all the rest of your favorites of the totality of the radiations given off by these actors has become distinctly noticeable in their present civilization, particularly during recent times. Although in previous epics certain of the ordinary beings there also took up that profession, on the one hand, data for Hasnamusian properties did not always become completely crystallized in the presence of every one of them, and on the other hand, the other beings instinctively sensed the maleficent influence radiating from these professionals and hence were on their guard and took great care to behave toward them in a corresponding manner. Indeed, in former centuries these artists or actors were relegated by other beings everywhere to the lowest caste and were regarded with contempt and even at the present time in many communities, for instance on the continent of Asia, it is not acceptable to shake hands with them, as is almost always the custom when meeting beings like oneself. In these communities, it is still considered defiling to sit at the same table with these actors and to eat with them. But on the continent that is now the chief place of what is called their cultured existence, contemporary beings not only inwardly consider these actors to be on the same level as themselves, but even copy their outer appearance, and at the present time imitate them in everything. A good example of what I have just said is the custom, now followed by your favorites, of shaving the beard and mustache. You should know that in past epics these terrestrial professional actors always had to go about during the process of their ordinary existence with mustaches and beards shaved off. and they had to shave off these expressors of their masculinity and activity, first of all because, constantly playing the roles of other beings, they often had to change their appearance, putting suitable makeup on their faces and wearing wigs and false mustaches and beards, which they could not possibly have done with their own beards and mustaches, and second, because the ordinary beings of all the former communities there, considering such actors dirty and a harmful influence and fearing that they might not recognize them if they chanced to meet them in ordinary conditions of existence and might inadvertently touch them, promulgated everywhere a strict ordinance requiring professional actors always to shave off their mustaches and beards in order to be unmistakable for other beings. Explaining to you the origin of this custom among actors of shaving their mustaches and beards, I recall the very sensible measure of justice employed by the three brain beings of the epic of the Tikliamitian civilization also connected with the shaving of hair, but in this case with the hair growing on the heads of beings. A law was then established and strictly enforced which decreed that those petty criminals who, after trial by seven elderly beings of the given district, had been found guilty of some immorality or crime, belonging to one of four previously established categories, the sort of criminals with whom all their prisons are usually crammed today had always to go about everywhere for a definite term with one of four sides of their heads shaven, and furthermore, any such convicted being was obliged to uncover his head whenever he met or spoke with others. It is interesting to note that there then existed another law, comparable to the one about shaving the head, in regard to the immoral behavior of women. In regard to the women, a decree existed that was also very strictly enforced, 
subject in this instance to the jurisdiction of seven elderly local women who had earned respect by their previous conduct and the penalties for women applied to four manifestations that were then considered as the greatest laxity and immorality. For instance, if all the neighbors noticed that some woman had behaved negligently and without due regard to her family duties, and if the seven elderly women confirmed it, then, according to this law, for a definite term wherever she went she had to appear with painted lips. And if various women noticed that she had begun to manifest a weakening of her maternal instinct toward her children, she was condemned according to this law to go about everywhere, also for a definite term, with the left half other face made up and painted white and red. And if, following the same procedure, it was established that a woman manifested an inclination to avert the possibility of conceiving a new being for the prolongation of her species, she was condemned to appear before others with her face made up and also painted white and red, but this time only on the right halt. And as for a woman who attempted to violate her chief wifely duty, that is, who deceived or even had the intention of deceiving her legal husband or who attempted to destroy a new being conceived in her, she was obliged by the same procedure, and also for a definite term, to go about everywhere made up and painted white and red, this time over the whole of her face. Quote. At this point in his tale, Beelzebub was interrupted by a moon with the following words. Your right reverence all your explanations concerning terrestrial art and those three brain beings who are, so to say, its representatives, and particularly your elucidations about the contemporary, comedians, or actors, have prompted me to make use of the impressions fixed in my common presence and perceived during my last stay on the surface of the planet Earth, in order to give our dear Hassan some good and practical advice. Quote. Having said this, Ahun was about to look expectantly at the face of Beelzebub with his usual unblinking gaze, but noticing the familiar smile, always sorrowful yet kind and indulgent, he turned in some confusion toward Hassan and, without waiting for permission, spoke as follows. Who knows? Maybe, dear Hassan, you too will one day visit that planet Earth and have to exist among those peculiar three-brained beings who have taken your fancy. Quote. And then, still keeping to the style and intonation of Beelzebub himself, he went on. It is for this very reason that I now wish to initiate you into the results of certain impressions I involuntarily received of the various types of those contemporary representatives of art, as well as the peculiarities of their manifestations. the three brain beings of contemporary civilization not only adorn this present-day art with a false halo and, particularly during the last few decades, treat its so-called adepts as equals and imitate them in their exterior manifestations but also, always and everywhere, unduly encourage and exalt them and in these contemporary representatives of art themselves, who as regards their genuine essence are really almost non-entities, there appears of itself, without any being consciousness on their part, a false assurance that they are not like all the rest but, as they call themselves, beings of a higher order, and the result is that in the common presence of these types the crystallization of the consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabuffer proceeds more intensively than in the presence of all the other three brain beings there. Furthermore, in regard
regard to these unfortunate free brain beings, the surrounding abnormal conditions of ordinary being existence are already established in such a way that there are bound to be crystallized in their common presence and to become an inseparable part of their general psyche those consequences of the properties of the organ kundabuffer they now call swaggering, pride, self-love, vanity, self-conceit, self-infatuation, envy, hate, touchiness, and so on and so forth. These